Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have another HF amplifier that recently appeared on my radar. Now this is the PLZ HF PA50W, which is supposed to be a 50 watt HF amplifier covering from 2 MHz up to 30 MHz. So essentially that's the 80 meter band up to the 10 meter handband. Now this amplifier does state that it has an inbuilt low pass filter, which we'll take a look at later and that is band selectable using the front rotary control. The selected band is indicated by one of those green LEDs which circle that rotary control. Now the front panel also hosts a power on and off button, the DC power input socket in which the manual states it can handle between 12 to 15 volts DC with less than 12 amps current draw. Now there's also a 3.5 millimeter socket on the front which is the accessory port for PTT control and band control. Now we'll talk more about those in a moment. Now on the back, we have two SO239 sockets, one for the antenna and one for your transceiver. You'll also notice what appears to be an inbuilt fan through those cutouts in that rear panel. Now this amplifier weighs just 1.3 pounds or 613 grams and it measures only 210 by 103 millimeters and it's 60 millimeters tall. And that makes it super compact just to chuck in your backpack for those POTA or SOTA days out. Now the input range, which is the transmission from your radio can be between one to five watts, meaning this would be perfectly suitable for QRP radios like the Zygu 6200, the ICOM 705, or even the Yaesu FT818. Now with regards to control in the PTT, that's when the amplifier goes into transmit mode at the same time as the transceiver. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no RF sensing. So you do have to control the PTT using the PTT input on the front panel. Now you do get a short power cable and you also get a 3.5 millimeter plug with a short lead. And you can use this to make a cable to connect between your radio and the amplifier to control that PTT line. The black wire is ground, the red wire is PTT ground wire. So connect these two together and it will go into transmit. Obviously you'd connect that red wire to the PTT line on the accessory port of your transceiver. The white wire apparently can be used to control the band, but at this moment in time, I cannot locate any information on what is required to change bands remotely. Now it's possible that this will use band volts, which is a normal way to select bands for radios like the Zygu brand, but more information on this will be needed. So for now, I'll only use the manual way, which is by using that front rotary control to select the required band. Okay, so let's do some power testing to see how much RF comes out of this amplifier. Now I'll be using a Hermes Light 2 transceiver using FM as the carrier drive source. So on 80 meters with a five watt input, we see an output of around 60 watts. On 40 meters with an input of around five watts, we see an output of around 55 watts. On 20 meters with an input of around four watts, we see an output of around 52 watts. On the 17 meter band with an input of around three watts, we see an output of around 45 watts. On the 15 meter band with an input of around three watts, we see an output of around 37 watts. On the 12 meter band with an input of around three watts, we see an output of around 34 watts. And then lastly, on the 10 meter band with an input of around three and a half watts, we see an output of around 38 watts. Now, as you could tell, the input was not a consistent five watts across all the bands, and the output reflected that input power change as we go higher in the bands. Now, for those of you that wish to see inside this amplifier, then let me quench your thirst. Four screws, two either side, allows me to remove that top cover. And we can clearly see the low pass filter network, which is switched in and out using those relays when we change the band on the front panel. The main RF transistor appears to have a large solid piece of metal over it. So I cannot verify the chip type that's used in this amplifier. And what's also hard to see is that under the main board, there appears to be a solid lump of metal which I guess is aluminium and the main transistor is attached to it. Now, presumably this is to assist with keeping the RF device cooler while it's in operation, essentially becoming a heatsink. 
Now it does look a little messy inside at first glance, but I guess that's because they have really gone to town with all that white resin which holds all of those wires in place. Maybe they were just a bit paranoid that things would start falling apart. Anyway guys, let us know down in the comments below what you think about this amplifier. Is it something that you might be interested in getting for yourself? Now I'll leave a coupon code down in the description of this video so that you can actually get some money off when you buy it through my Banggood link. Anyway guys, take care of yourselves, be kind to one another, and I'll see you in the next video.